Welcome back to the long-awaited second episode of your long-term plan for Amherst Schools brought to you by the Joint Facilities Advisory Committee and the Amherst School Board. I'm Tom Gothier alongside the chair of the JFAC Committee, as we affectionately call it, Shannon Gascoigne. And we are here after a uh, long wait uh, to really give you an update on where things stand. We want you to know that, number one, this project is still going forward, but we're developing those details uh, to get ready to, to be able to present something on the ballot in March of 2022. So it's been a while since we since we last touched base and, and there have been a few reasons for the delays, all worthwhile reasons for the delays, but there are some things that you have to go through as you build up into this process um, to, to get things to where they need to be to be able to, to take the proper steps. Um, but first of all, thank you for watching that first video. I, I know Shannon, we had a lot of great feedback on social media, through emails, through direct communications with us that the videos are appreciated, and we, on the other hand, appreciate you watching those videos, but we also appreciate the questions that you ask, and as we go forward with future videos in this series, as we get more things in place, we'll be able to answer some of those questions on the video series, but we have been able to answer them all uh, on the website as well. So to give you the update on where we are, kind of that 30,000-foot view, and, and maybe a little lower, maybe a 20,000-foot view, and we get closer mm -hmm. to the ground with, with each passing day. Um, first and foremost, we have a new architect for this project, and it is Banwell Architects. And, and Shannon, you can tell us a little bit about the process that went into actually getting Banwell on board, how we went from where we were in the last video to where we are today with Banwell. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Tom. Um, and, and I think you're right. It's all a process. And, and really, the goal is, is to keep folks informed on um, kind of what our process is and, and where we are. So as you may recall, folks watching from home, um, last year, we had engaged the services of Little Valley Brensinger Architects, and they brought forward a plan um, for the program that we have here in Amherst. Um, we presented that plan to the school board, and the Amherst school board said, hey, you know, we 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 like it, we hear the need, um, but we wanna look deeper. We wanna dig deeper into this plan before we bring it forward to residents and the community. So going back through, the next step was to um, take that program and those plans, put that out for um, uh, RFP um, to other firms and had several firms come back and Banwell Architects out of Lebanon, New Hampshire, um, was a really good fit. We had uh, several members from the Joint Facilities Advisory Committee sit in on the interview process along with um, Amherst School Board members and um, representatives from the SAU. Um, Banwell Architects has a long history of coming in at this point in school building projects um, and doing some value engineering to really help communities get the building that matches their program along with um, the expectations and the desires of the community. Yeah, so that's a really important step to have the, the people that are going to help us design this building that can really do a lot of that site work and get things ready and, and analyze the space that we have and what's the best way to use that. The next step, of course, is to get the people that will actually build this school. So as we sit here today, we're going through the process of a, an RFP, which is a request for proposal. We outline a, a detailed plan of what we're looking for. We submit it out in the public. Firms come back and say, this is what we'll do. And that's the hire a construction manager. They're the ones that will actually build the school. They'll hire the subcontractors for all the bits and pieces. They'll get the furniture, all that stuff that will actually see the school go from a, a blueprint into an actual building. And so the construction manager process, that is where we're standing right now. But there are some other uh, hirings that we have to do and some other work that's getting done at the same time. Sure. Yeah. So um, the construction manager, you're right, Tom, they'll handle kind of the scheduling. They will um, work, you know, they'll work for for the town and for the district um, and and guide that architect process. And the um, uh, but also important, as important as the pre bond site and civil work. Right. So we want to know that these designs that are being developed will actually work on on the site. So that is also an RFP. P that is out right now. So the construction manager and the um, site and civil engineer should be, um, we should have a recommendation ready to present to the Amherst School Board in August. And when the Amherst School Board then um, makes the determination who they're hiring, we'll engage those services and what that will allow us to do um, for the community and for our residents is to begin hosting public forums in September, where we will have a good idea um, regarding the cost of these designs through um, engagement with the construction manager and what it really is going to look like and mean for our community regarding um, not only cost, but phasing of the project and 
um, really be able to answer some of those more detailed questions that we're already hearing from folks in our community and that we have on the committee as well. Um, similar questions um, that we need those experts to, to come in and help us with. And what Banwell has done just um, since engaging their services, you know, they took a look at the program that LB, um, PA, La Valley Brunsinger had put together last year, and they have spent um, significant time with the building administrators and the staff at the schools, employees at the SAU and the facilities committee um, looking at that program to say, okay, where do we have square footage that we don't need in these plans that La Valley put together? Um, where can we refine things? Um, where can we, one of the designs that we're looking very closely at right now for Wilkins um, actually salvages the multi-purpose room, which is fantastic because it it has been expressed to the committee and it is a feeling of of those on the committee as well that you know anything that our community has already paid for that we can use, we want to use that. Right, we don't we don't want to tear things down if we don't need to. Um, we want to get the best buildings for our students and our community um, at, at at the best cost. So yeah, uh, Banwell's an, doing a great job there. Yeah, and I think it's an important thing to know that you know we have heard those rumors that this is a two hundred million dollar project. Uh, you know, when we first came out with these plans, somewhere in the last seven to eight months, it's been a while now. It was a hundred million dollar project. You know, we're with the construction manager getting hired, that is going to help us go from step one, kind of that rough overall estimate, maybe a price per square footage down to the next step of, this is what the project is, is more likely going to cost. And then as we get into the construction process and the bidding process, that's when we know the, the final true hard numbers. So we're hoping in the coming weeks to months that we'll have a much better estimate off of that original 97 million down to a, a figure that's a little bit lower based off of designs, repurposing buildings like the multi-purpose room, and then the, the new construction manager coming in, giving us those those better uh, fine-tuned estimates, if you will. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. That that first $96 million um, number um, was was just that. It was a first number. Um, yeah. And and where we are now is is really um, looking at how we can how we can get what we need um, at a cost that um, that, that the community support. And it's, um, and it's important to know that we, we've talked a little bit and maybe the way that we've referenced this, it's been more towards the Wilkins Elementary School project, but this entire project does encompass not only a new Clark Wilkins Elementary School, a new K through five elementary, but it also involves a major renovation, essentially an overhaul, if you will, of Amherst Middle School as well. And that's an important part of this project that is all lumped together. So if we say it's let's say it, it does come back at 100 million for round numbers sake, that includes AMS too. It's not just a $100 million elementary school. So anything that comes back does include that overall project because when it comes down to it, we can't do one without the other. We can't renovate AMS and make it a sixth through eight building without having a space for fifth graders. And we don't have a space for fifth graders until we do something with Clark Wilkins. So that's why it is a joint project with the two buildings. So it is important to know and as we go forward over the, couple, the coming weeks and months, we'll have much better cost estimates. Shannon also mentioned that the other driving factor that we have with these videos, in addition to covering topics like this, is to provide information, but also to seek engagement. And that's why we have starting in September, monthly public hearings. We'll have Banwell Architects at those hearings as well. They'll be at some of our JFAC and school board meetings to present information. So we're doing the best we can to get that information out there. Uh, but if you still have questions or if you still see something that, you know, uh, a void that we could fill, you can get in touch with us through the website, which is jfac.sau39.org. And that is one of the nice things about the website. We also have the new conceptual designs that are on that website that we've been discussing in JFAC and we'll be discussing with a construction manager over the coming months to narrow down options and, and eventually choose the option that we want to go with. Absolutely. Yep. And those are um, a good point. Those are draft designs still at Correct. this point. Um, but I think it's it's important that, that folks start looking at those and, and, and ask us your questions because, you know, we will only be better for them um, and, and be able to provide something um, for residents to to vote on um, that is reflective of, of what you would like to see based on your questions. Um, 
So I think with that, I think we'll remind you again to, to send questions to jfac.sau39.org. You can follow us on social media. You can follow these videos on our YouTube channel and on the SAU 39 YouTube channel and social media channels. Uh, we're getting out there in as many places as possible. And as we get into the, the fall, um, you know, attend the public hearings, come with questions or, or uh, give us questions to, to bring up beforehand, because we're certainly not going to think of everything. Shannon and I are just two people out of a, a, a vast group of people that have been involved in this project thus far, but we're a very tiny, tiny portion of Amherst residents that, uh, that certainly have a vested interest in this as well. Any final words, Shannon, from you before we, uh, before we let this video go to bed and get ready for number three? <laughs> I don't think so. Just um, to echo what you said earlier, Tom, thanks to everyone for watching um, and for sending us your thoughts, your comments, your questions. For Shannon Gascoigne, the chair of the JFAC committee, I'm Tom Gothier, the chair of the Amherst School Board. We're very appreciative that you watched video number two, our episode two in our series on the long-term plan for Amherst schools. And we'll be back soon with episode three.